You're listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast. Okay, I got my water too. Um, all right, I guess we're ready to roll. Okay, let's roll. Right, let's roll. I'm here with uh, Cheryl and Teresa of Interior. What's the name of the place? Twin, Twin Sisters. Twin Sister Interior. That's right. I wrote down. I just read it to you, and then I forgot already. <laughs> So uh, the first thing we'll ask is, so I'm, I'm up late last night and I'm, I'm screwing around on the internet, messing around on the internet, and I see that you guys won an award uh, for best remodel of the year. Was it 2020? Yes, in 2020, uh, over a thousand square feet remodel. Um, and it was located in San Antonio in the kind of Minky Park area. But uh, it was a pretty uh, big transformation if you see the before and after. Um, you know, the in front of the home was completely transformed and same thing with the inside. We pretty much took it down to the studs and, and then built it back up and made it look awesome. I was looking at the pictures and I was like, that's not the same freaking house. Yeah. There's no way. Cause I think it was originally it was like a duplex or something, right? Correct. A two story duplex. And when you look at the new picture, uh, you, you'd mentioned earlier, like the roof line was different. Mm -hmm. It does not look like the same house, and it is beautiful. How did y'all get involved in that kind of project? Well, that one we uh, partnered with a builder that we've we've done a few projects on, and so uh, we did the design, and he did the you know ran all the trades and and everything. So um, he found that project and then brought us in, and I remember you know walking up and seeing it from the front for the first time, and you kind of have to sometimes it's overwhelming you was know? your mind blown too yeah that's yeah. cool it's kind of like okay where do we start you know and then um but you you just have to take it you know one step at a time a little bite at a time until you come up with an entire plan and and there was an architect involved on that one so that helped i work with an engineering firm and we do mep design i've been doing plumbing design for like 20 years now mm -hmm. and uh uh one thing that's always cool is is when you're designing something on paper, you know, you got these cool ideas and concepts, but when you actually start seeing it being built and things happening, you're kind of like, it's kind of mind blowing sometimes. And I'm sure y'all see it more than what I do because I'm stuck in the office all the time, but it's kind of like you don't, it's like, I, I designed this, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, cause yeah, it's your colors and it, it's your, your thought processes. But when you start seeing it come to life, it's kind of like, you know, uh, it, you kind of impressed yourself, I think. Yeah. And that one's super nice, so y'all should be super proud of that one. Uh, and the, Yeah, there's always a moment where, you know, in the planning stage, thinking, is this is this going to come together? Is this all going to work? And, you know, uh, a little bit of anxiety behind each project. But then once you see it start coming together, it's like, oh, yeah, that does look good. <laughs> so what do y'all do as far as, like, well, let's go back a little bit. How did you get involved? And if y'all can get a little closer, uh, how did y'all get involved in the uh, interior design? Because y'all said y'all went to school for business, right? Right. Um, I think we've always had that artistic background. And so... Um, since you were younger? Since we were young. And um, so we went to school for business and just kind of generic, we'll do something, you know. Um, but actually, it's worked out, I think, a lot better than had we gone for interior design because... Uh, we're self-employed so 50% of our business is running a business yeah. it's not the design aspect so you could be a successful designer and not know how to run a business and you're not going to be successful so um, I think we were able to kind of bring both those skills together the artistic side and the business side um, but as far as design we have just always had a love for you know beautiful homes and we came back, you know, up from very modest upbringings and moved to the San Antonio area and started to be exposed to just beautiful homes and um, I guess kind of opened our eyes to what all is out there. And we, the more you get exposed and the more you're just in it, you start to, um, I don't know, we, I guess, we kind of morphed into that design side the wanting to make things happen make it beautiful and um it started with small projects we had you know friends that say i want you to help me pick some paint colors for my house or and they always want that done for free right yeah for sure <laughs> mm -hmm. and then um 
my husband owned a couple nursing homes and they had us do some of the design there because like hey you're free you're home why don't you (laughs) pick out the furniture and paintings and all this stuff for the nursing home and so we got exposed to commercial design pretty early on um and then just friends of friends i'm you help my friend can you help me now on my house and so Teresa actually said why don't we make this a business and you know how long ago was that Ten, ten, about 10 years ago. Ten years oh, ago. 10 years yeah. now? Yeah. Jeez, that's good. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard. I'd imagine, I've never started a business, but I'd imagine those first few years are the most difficult. And it's kind of like if you can get through a handful of those, things yeah. start to flatten out and you start to become what you intended to, to, to become. So Yeah. And I think one of the important things is we've always, we've had to change and grow and um, evolve. And, you know, it's, we started, like she said, just kind of doing small projects. And you had that desire to like, oh, we want to be working in these million dollar homes. But thank goodness we didn't start out with that. We had to yeah. grow into that and it allowed us to um, really expand our portfolio. And um, we we were able to mature, you know, in ourselves and, and the design that we could bring to the table. And so had we started big right from the beginning we probably would have failed and so i think that we were we were allowed to just grow uh, organically and it it just really worked and we've been kind of blessed to always have plenty of work um and you know just keeps growing every year are y'all mostly in the san antonio area or you're doing mostly surrounding bernie hill country dominion Carrera, kind of out i-10 area this this area is growing like yeah, crazy it is. uh just driving up here i don't come up here very often and if i do i typically come around 46 but i came up i-10 and i was i couldn't believe it's turning into to me it always kind of started out like in the valley like when you drove from brownsville to let's say McAllen, you never knew what town you were in mm-hmm. you know because they're just all all up against each other now uh san antonio austin's becoming that way yeah and it almost seems like now from san antonio to, to maybe Kerrville, I guess, yeah. mm-hmm. it's starting to develop the same way. So, I mean, there's a lot of growth out here. Yeah. You well, guys... A lot of people moving in from out of state. <laughs> oh, don't remind me. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping California and New York get their stuff together so yeah. those people can go back. So I don't want to stay but until... The, the ones that we've met that have moved here have told us that they're coming because they like what yeah. Texas has to offer and they're not going to change it. So. Oh, hopefully, hopefully. hopefully. That, that's all we're getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you were saying that y'all do any anywhere from like 10 or 15 projects is that throughout the year or is that any one time how many do y'all do you do a year we uh oh we're probably about 40 projects a year I would oh say. wow yeah. yeah um and that's, that's a bunch yeah we've, we've uh, we probably then, take on a lot more <laughs> we're trying to maybe um take on bigger projects and less of them instead of the small ones and mm-hmm. you've got 40 going so um but we're a team of four now so that's how okay we, um she and i do most of the design but we have another designer working with us now part-time but um yeah <laughs> it keeps us busy that's yeah. good it though keeps us running that's you know sure. it's funny because like i i kind of social media stalk y'all a little bit <clears throat> and so y'all stuff's beautiful and i noticed that there is a a definite um style i guess and everybody's gonna gonna develop their own style yeah. but it's like when you're doing that many projects a year how do you how do you keep the designs fresh and and uh you know instead of going well hey we did this on these two houses let's just do yeah, it on yeah. these three we we have never repeated or cookie yeah. cutter our designs um, we do try to keep them fresh but it's honestly it's pretty exhausting like you go home and you're just so mentally tired because yeah. you all day long trying to be creative and um so we really have to try to find a balance and you know on the weekends just refresh so that we can come again with a a fresh mind on monday and you know be able to offer um new and interesting and uh, Mm -hmm. different designs for our clients um but it's not easy i mean i'd imagine also like I, I guess, you know, I'm sure there's a process where you guys sit down with a client and kind of get your mind wrapped around their personality and what they're yeah. wanting to live in. But uh, I'd imagine that a lot of times 
people will say, uh, hey, I saw this on y'all's, y'all's yeah, page yeah. and I want that. Yes. You know, and it's like, uh, there's a, I would have, you know, there's got to be a line where, hey, I want to please the, I want to please the client, of course. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, we want to give you something new. Right. Yeah. You know, so how do you guys go about maybe, I hate to say it this way, but it is what it is, uh, kind of redirecting a client into a direction that you they may not be aware of those those uh, those options, and you guys are. So trying to get them off of something that they want to do that's maybe a, a replication of something else and get them into something new. What do you guys do for those folks? Is just showing them materials, or do you all well, take them I mean, places? I think that's a very good question because um, I think there are a lot of people who think they know what they want, but... But they don't. They just they see something. They like. Oh yeah, I, I like that. But so what we really try to do from the very beginning is uh, get to know them and who they are. And so we want a reflection of their personality. We don't want to just you know impose our designs completely on them. We'd like to be a process where they're collaborating with us. Um, and if we truly do a good job of that, then each room will be different because it would be more of a reflection of that specific client. So we're taking into consideration their family, do they have pets, do they, you know, young kids, older kids, um, when we're considering materials and colors and um, all of that and how it's going to flow because it's not just, you know, about looking pretty, it's it's a feeling that it's going to achieve once it's done and how it lives for that particular family yeah you know it's funny because my wife and i we bought a little cookie cutter home years ago it's it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar dog house is what it is (laughs) so when we first got together we were in a one-bedroom apartment and my sister found uh beaumont on this back road between beville and george west and uh uh she she says i have this dog I, i can't do anything with him do you want him and uh Super cute, uh, belly full of worms. He'd oh. been stuck out in the country. I guess somebody dumped him and his siblings out there. So uh, Nina liked him. I liked him. So we brought him to the apartment. And real quick, he was too big for the apartment. So then we bought this house. And so did you bought the house to, to accommodate the dog? To accommodate the dog. <laughs> yeah. If not, we probably would still be there in, in the medical center in that one bedroom apartment. Uh, but so yeah, it was to accommodate. It sounds terrible, but yeah. And uh, so it's funny because there's times where we come home and it's a cookie cutter home, right? So it's that ugly tan carpet. And I'll be honest with you, she and I don't agree on much ever. Uh, <laughs> so the majority of our walls are still primer white and we've been there 12 years. So it's funny because when you come home and not that I hate my house, but you know, you come home and you're kind of like, oh, it's just drab it's the same fixtures that the yeah. contractor put in and you know when it's brand new it's kind of like oh well this is nice and then 12 years <laughs> later you're like this is less nice than what i remember when we first bought it yeah. you know so having you know i guess everybody puts a lot of thought and money into the the building of the home and not so much of the design of the interior and it's like when you walk into a house uh, my buddy bo's house beautiful mm-hmm. you know and you walk in and it's comfortable yeah. and and you get you walk in and there's that feeling of it's like oh this is this is nice yeah. you know and not just that it's nice because of the materials but you know the colors are doing something to you the lighting is doing something to you this the yeah. space and it's kind of like this is way better than my shotgun house you know with with the that ugly brown carpet and two dogs that I'm tired of <laughs> but uh so i mean there it i guess we don't I guess we don't put a lot of thought into, for the most part, the 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 design of the interior. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, again, like I said, we're primer white, and now there's <laughs> and now it's primer white with some cobwebs in, in the corners and stuff. <laughs> well, my, my wife's gonna kill me because I'm saying too much stuff about her house, but you know, uh, um, a lot of people bring us on as kind of mediators between the husband and wife because very rarely, oh, I'd imagine that works. Yeah, I mean, r- very rarely I would say that a husband and wife agree on design. They're usually like two ends of the spectrum yeah. and they want us to agree with one of them. And so we're, we're almost like marriage counselors and we're trying to find a way to get them to come together on something that will... Well, for, for purposes of me and my wife, who do y'all find is the most logical you know, <laughs> around men and women like that? I don't know. It's whoever's got the checkbook. <laughs> it's got yeah. the checkbook. <laughs> so... Uh, 
so like it let me ask you this i mean this is y'all's business i don't want to <clears throat> i don't want to uh to be giving away free stock advice but if you have somebody namely uh, nina molina <laughs> in selma texas who's trying to fall in love with their house again uh -huh. what are some things people can do to that aren't going to break the bank but will kind of i guess the most bang for their buck that they can do themselves and kind of it's like buying uh new tires for the car right yeah. all of a sudden it's like this is a great car again yeah. you know what, what is it that, that most people can do is it paint or is it light fixtures or? yeah i think paint is huge because it just freshens everything normally we're telling people lighten it up because they're living in a dark space but if yeah. your walls are already white you probably need some primer make white it, make it a little more cozy <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah some type of colors that just warm up the space and mm -hmm. make it feel cozier what that kind doesn't of, mean dark but what kind of colors do you think work best for that and i'll be honest with you i'm i'm just i'm i'm an idiot right so when we go to lowe's and we look at the color area and it's kind of like <clears throat> we have to fight to kind of get off of, okay, what's my favorite color? My favorite color is blue. Well, I kind of like purple. And so we, you go, immediately we go to the brightest blue <laughs> and the brightest purple. Yeah. And uh, there's so much to look at. So what's kind of something that people can kind of go into Lowe's with? Because well, we'll go in like 20 times and yeah. we'll never buy anything. Uh, I think we bought a can of paint to do the restroom and it was like this flesh tone brown <laughs> oh, that somebody had mixed already. And it was like, screw it, let's just buy this and we'll throw it in the bathroom. And it... It's probably the color that's been in our house uh, the longest, but it is it is hideous. I'm trying to look for something in here. By the way, your, your guys' studio is amazing. Thank you. Thank so I'm trying to find something in here that matches that color, but there's too much class and taste in here that I don't see that color. <laughs> but I would recommend you do a little bit of research before you go get overwhelmed looking at a thousand color chips on a wall at Lowe's or Home Depot. You know, Pinterest um, can be a good resource. And, you know, maybe you or you just Google like most popular paint colors right now or 2021, you know, and it, it's really it's helpful to kind of see it. Like you said, you're looking around, you see it beforehand before you go in there and then you have kind of a direction um, and don't get overwhelmed because it, it can be overwhelming. Um, Is it safe to go like lighter? I feel like every time we go and we like a color, it's always too dark. Yes. Right. Typically, yeah. it looks a lot darker on the wall than it does when you're just looking at that one inch by one inch paint chip. So just have that in mind that you may need to. And one trick, um, I don't know if they can do this at Lowe's or Home Depot, but certainly Sherwin Williams or another paint store, is they can actually reduce the formula of the paint. So if you like this very intense, you know, green, they can reduce it by fifty percent. So it's that same color but uh less intense okay and so um they'll, they'll just mix that differently but you gotta let them know yeah, cool. i think um, the loud paints i mean it's it's just overwhelming like you said when you walked in you, there was a lot to look at but you want your home to kind of we let the walls um be neutral be a, a just a palette to add your accessories and your art so if you've got loud walls and then crazy art it's just like I can't relax. It's not homey. Yeah. But, you know, let your walls be neutral. And so we do a lot of the grayish. It's kind of a mix between gray and beige. Okay. You're saying you're trying to get away from the brown carpet. Yeah. But you don't want to go, like, on the other end of the spectrum and, oh, well, everybody's doing gray. I'm going to do gray. So um, that's kind of a happy medium is it's a light cross between a gray and a beige and it's what do you call it again grayish grayish and are they going to know that when i go to lowe's yes you can say show me some grayish oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that yeah. that's that's interesting because you know i think one thing that we ran into a problem with because we painted a couple walls and then we stopped because we're like this is not good uh i i guess looking at y'all's pictures online is i noticed the i guess the layering yeah, right yeah. so like you said the the walls are kind of a we have these we have a couple of walls that are too dark i'm not gonna lie one's like a mustard oh, wow. or orange kind of and i kind of like that but at the same time it's just really deep and, uh -huh. and heavy but i guess you know we we put too much emphasis on the wall color and not so much on the layering of what we're seeing so like you said incorporating a piece of art mm -hmm. or like a small little sculpture or right. on a shelf or something that kind of gives 
you know, you're giving depth to what you're seeing and there's some contrast in color. Right. And uh, uh, I guess that's where you guys come in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. <laughs> So uh, I've got these, uh, and then I started decorating the house with like a ram's head and some mesquite wood and uh, a Texas flag. So it just got, uh, and my wife just gave up, I think. So that's where we're at. I mean, uh, we it took us forever to even just to buy bedroom furniture uh, because we couldn't agree on it. You know, I like that. She likes something a little more modern and clean, I guess. And I, I like that heavy looking uh made it out of world war world war ii furniture <laughs> you know i was like that because to me it's kind of like uh that, that looks like it's lasted 100 years and it might last another 100 yeah. and she's more kind of like a visual it, it yeah. doesn't look nice so it took us forever and i think the only and we actually like what we have now but that was by dumb luck we went to the furniture place and it was like we kind of both agreed on it and it was one of those scratch and dent things so it's kind of like okay well we pay this amount for it it's, i'm not gonna have that heartburn over it because i was a i was not 100 percent happy with it i don't think she was 100 percent happy with it so i guess that's where compromise. it was a compromise it was like okay neither one of us hate it neither one of us love it so it's probably a good purchase and we ended up doing it and that that kind of turned out uh nice but the wall it's still up against primer white wall so it's oh. it's very interesting i mean the, the psychology behind how we make our decisions and your home is so personal and you know so how you decide to to furnish it and and the colors and the textures that go into it, it the other day i was working with a, an older couple and they were in here and he's like tell her that we don't have to have something on every space in the home so like <laughs> if there's a blank wall or blank place on the table she feels like she has to put something there and um she tells me that when her, she was growing up if you had empty tables or empty places on your wall that mean you meant you could not afford something there oh and so she would look and say oh poor person can't afford a painting on the wall so it's blank and so she's thinking i have to put something in every spot oh that's interesting and he is more minimal and yeah. a lot of guys do tend to be more minimal but anyway i've never thought about why people have this need to put something everywhere you know when you go to the fair and there's that game and it's like a bulldozer pushing the coins uh -huh. yeah right and everything's up against the edge and you're dropping coins trying to push mm -hmm. more coins over the edge that's literally what our tv table looks like <laughs> so we i mean i should have taken a picture for you guys because now that we're having this conversation i wish you could see it but she's got stuff everywhere and to the edge and i mean it's busy yeah. you know and uh uh the other day she was doing something I, I, she even bought us we have the brightest house on the planet right we don't we do indirect lighting very differently at my house. And uh, it's Christmas lights that she throws on top of the cabinets. So you don't see them. You just get the effect of the light. <laughs> so we have the brightest house at night. Uh, so she was adding some more uh, strip lighting or something, I don't know, to the front of the TV. Uh, underneath the tinsel for the Easter. Uh, like I told you, it's it's friggin' crazy. But, but it, it's interesting because she will put something everywhere. everywhere. And to me, it's kind of like if there's... If this table had nothing on it, it'd be beautiful. Yeah. You know? And uh, to her, she's, she's going to put something on every corner. <laughs> and uh, uh, so that's, that's kind of uh, yeah. the struggle that we have. Yeah. It's amazing, though, once you start removing things, it's so, like, to me, very freeing. And, yeah. like, I can breathe now. I don't have all these fake plants gathering dust and, you know, wh whatever. I mean, I editing down there's definitely something to be said for that just having a few pieces that are very meaningful versus a lot of little tchotchkes that don't mean much i like that you said that because there's a i, I to me it's kind of like we hold on to too much yeah, stuff for yeah. sure. you know and it's like let's keep the the important things right. and let's get rid of something we bought a she calls it a she 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 shed but we bought a tough shed from Lowe's or something, Home Depot. And so I was kind of like, great, we're going to clean out the garage. Mm -hmm. So we had a conversation, and it was kind of like, well, hey, we're going to get rid of things, and we're just going to keep stuff that we need to keep. To me, it's kind of like, if, uh, hang on, I'll get there in a minute. So anyway, uh, so we had the conversation. She agreed to it, and it was kind of like, I'll throw it away later. Let's put it in the shed. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so how do you get somebody off of that? Is it just in their own time or? 
It's, what is your you advice move, to? If you move, then you have to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, that's probably our next step is getting out of there. It's just she and I. No, and, it's like a forced, uh, yeah, purge. It, yeah, and to me, it's kind of like there's so much that we keep that we don't need. Yeah, like even in cabinets yeah. and in pantries, and it's just like it's clutter and it's it's kind of overwhelming, you know. And it, it's a uh, uh, it adds to the. I don't want to say I don't want to be here feeling, yeah. but it kind of adds to the, I'd rather be somewhere else because this place is just too cluttered. Yeah, yeah too it gets heavy and stressful. overwhelming and stressful and it's not peaceful when there's stuff everywhere. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it, it creates a little bit of anxiety, um, but it, it depends on the, the person. You know, sometimes it's a like pulling the band-aid slowly and then sometimes it's just ripping it off uh, yeah. as far as getting rid of those items because a lot of times they do have some kind of sentimental value um but you know that's it, kind of the benefit of hiring us is yeah. we get to be the bad guys like, <laughs> yeah. okay, you know, you see what you have but this is what we're gonna put it back it's fun it's it, i was gonna say it's funny but it's not funny my my uh mother-in-law passed away several years ago so it I try and I try and walk on eggshells, so to speak, when certain when when it comes to getting rid of things, because there's there's some things that are kind of like the most minute thing. It's like why are we keeping that? Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like well, my mom oh, gave it to yeah, me, yeah. and it's kind of like oh okay, well I don't know. She's <laughs> she's got a stack of Beanie Babies, and uh, I'm kind of like let's get rid of these, and she's like no. Yeah. And I'm like well, why not? And she's like I used to collect them with my mom. We're not getting rid of them. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, well, fine. And then the other day, a friend of hers was like, do you have this one Beanie Baby? It's worth $200,000. And I'm like, it's not worth $200,000. I don't know who told you that, but it's a friggin' Beanie Baby. You know? Sometimes, though, if you can maybe, in that instance, encourage her to, you know, like, look, this child may really love on these Beanie Babies and, you know, be able to appreciate them more than we can. So let let's, like, gift them to the next person so they can... Some enjoyment. So when can you come by my house and talk to her? <laughs> She'll be back Sunday, so I'm, sounds good. Yeah, come by now. <laughs> well, we're we're, we're going to get her side of the story though, which will be. You know, oh, trust <laughs> me, you're going to side with me on this definitely. <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you about, which is pretty important, and I'm looking at my notes because I never write notes, but uh, savvy giving by design. So I I. Uh, I, I I love y'all's designs, and I saw y'all doing this this thing where you're uh, you started uh, uh, renovating bedrooms for mm-hmm. for people. Now, explain it to me a little bit. It's is it cancer patients or um, just anything in general? Anything or? in general, any okay. um, kid facing a medical crisis. So, um, as we're talking about decluttering and your space kind of reflects your mood, there are studies showing that um, the space that you're in affects not only your mood but your physical well-being and so um some of these kids you know maybe they can't leave their room because of um immunities and their immunity is compromised um but we're we you know knowing that based on their surroundings it can affect their healing um we just felt there was a greater calling we love the clients that we work with and um they're fun and you know but at the end of the day it's like what did i really do today well i put you know a really nice ping in a really nice lady's house but um when we came across the idea to be able to give back is when we really started feeling like i've done something good with my life um if nothing else you know i don't have to die rich but you know what will what's my lasting impact yeah. Um, when I leave this world and to think about, you know, a kid that's sitting in a room that, w- and to be honest, some of the spaces that we've done are barely livable. And um, some of these rooms, they're, you know, they're not like what most people think when they see, a, you know, a kid, you don't realize, you know, maybe he doesn't even have a bed that he's sleeping on. He yeah. might be sleeping on a mat on the floor, on a wood floor at that, or, you know, so, um, it's really um, kind of transformed our lives and our point of view and what is really important in life. Um, where did this start? Uh, I mean, wh- where was, I'm sure that this kind of thing was maybe always, you know, boiling in the back of your mind 
but you know, I guess what pushed you guys in that direction or, or... well, um, we know Harley Fetterman, um, you know him too, um, Beth's son from George West. Oh yeah. So, um, he dealt, you know, fought cancer courageously for 18 years. Well, not 18, but you know, until he was 18 from the age of five, I believe. But, um, just kind of knowing his story and getting, um, Hearing about what he dealt with and yeah. in and out of hospitals for literally, you know, 13 years of his 18 years. Um, then we had another friend whose daughter had cancer and she had kind of just, I don't know, God just placed her on our hearts and so we reached out and, and just offered to, what what could we do to help? And, and then we said, well, I mean, we don't, you know, we're not bakers or this, that, but we can decorate. So we offered, a, you know, would it be helpful to her if we kind of redecorated a room a little bit? And her mom just replied back and said, she's been so down and so depressed and she's changed from, you know, after her diagnosis. And she said this would be life changing for her to, to do something like this. And that was the first actual room makeover we did. And you know, um, it's at no cost to the family, and um, we do it with volunteers and uh, raising funds from the community. Uh, we go in and we meet the family and, and um, kind of get to know the child and find out what they like and what would make them happy and what the needs are, physical needs, if they're, uh, like she said, immunocompromised. We take all that into consideration when designing with the uh, surfaces and everything. Um, but that one was the most amazing feeling. We, we do the whole, you know, come in and, and install everything while they're out. And then we have them walk in and do a reveal all HGTV style. And yeah, um, and, I saw the, I saw the last couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think, uh, didn't a case at 12 or something yes. cover one of them? Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah. yeah. And so we've, we've kind of growing that organization. We've been doing that for a year and a half or what? so, two, two yeah. years. And, uh, we do at least a room a quarter. We'd like to do more. It's just sometimes we're limited on resources. Yeah. But um, but we've also partnered with Make a Wish, so we are now oh, working wow. on our third Make a Wish room. So with especially with COVID, families aren't able to maybe go to Disneyland like they would have chosen as their their Make a Wish. So more and more they're choosing to have a room makeover instead and so that's a great a idea cute little four-year-old girl that we're gonna do next and uh, we're super excited you and were we're, saying that's a princess room or something yeah, right yeah, yeah yeah um very pink and white and just uh, bright and happy that's cool um, so and we want it to be well designed so you know even the girls with them. the little girl saying i want I want the princess. So we'll make sure it, it will grow with her. And, um, you know, it's something that, you know, she may be able to take this furniture to college with her. I mean, we, we yeah. get some investment pieces that are uh, good quality. And, again, that's going to be um, just provide an overall safe, healthy, um, fun place for her to spend a lot of her time as she goes through treatments and things like that. And so the, the Savvy Giving by Design is actually there's a um, – it's nationwide now. An interior designer in San Diego, California, started it, the first chapter. When we started looking to do our thing, we were like, how do you start a nonprofit? Oh, we got to get an attorney. We need a board. You know, um, we're, how much do you have to spend? I was going to ask you this information. It's like Go ahead. It's crazy to think, you know, you know, I want to do the design part and I want to help kids. I don't know how to set this up legally and all of that. So we were throwing around names and coming up with our own name and like, no, can't use that. So Teresa happened to find on the website Howl's um, that this interior designer's story and how she was wanting to branch out into other states. And um, so we contacted her and went through a whole interview process. And we were one of the initial probably three or four chapters. And uh, from that, we were the first and only chapter in Texas. But um, got her approval and were able to um, be an extension of her program where we didn't have to work about worry about the legal fees and all of that. So she had taken care of that. And um, we have dues that, that we pay that kind of contributes to that. But it, when it's on a national level, it's a lot easier to handle than, you know, on our own and trying to figure out, navigate through that. That's uh, pretty smart. Ourselves, yeah. I, I, uh, my mother-in-law... 
So I, I, I've been making some Los Pelioneros stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of Spanish for people who fight and quarrel some kind of thing. And uh, when, when I first kind of made it up, I was like, uh, I told my, my wife, I said, if we ever buy a ranch, I'm going to call it Los Pelioneros Ranch. I said, because we're always fighting, <laughs> and uh, uh, which was a great idea. And then her mother-in-law had gotten cancer. She had it for about six years. She actually had really good six years. Um, she had her issues with chemo and whatnot, but uh, she had a great attitude and a great mentality toward all that. And she kind of, she kind of was uh, one of those people who was kind of, I need to go now, you know, because I need to do it while I still can. Mm-hmm. If, if I wait, I'm just going to get sick, so I need to go now. So she traveled. She went to Germany and France and other places, and uh, uh, she'd give scarves to people, you know, homeless people when she'd gone to France and, and things like that. So she came back. I had uh, We were taking her to MD Anderson, and she... I took her one week. We spent about a week over there, and that's an amazing place. I don't know if y'all have ever been there, but mm-hmm. they, they, uh, they're they very good at what they do. And... Uh, one time she goes in to get therapy and I go outside to the back porch and there's a bunch of people out there and I see this lady with no hair and she's sitting in the sun and there's a guy next to her and he's, I'm assuming that's her husband, he's asleep and she's throwing up into a towel oh. and nurses are walking by her and so like, uh, you know, it kind of, I'm, I'm watching this and I'm watching nobody yeah. come to her aid and it dawns on me that, oh, this is just what this lady does, yeah. you know, and, and they're so used to it yeah. that they're not even worried about it. And that's when it occurred to me that it, these are the people that are really fighting something, yeah. you know. So same thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. I get a little extra money. I get some stuff made. I sell it. I take the money and I either donate it to MD Anderson or I give it to somebody. That's awesome. And, uh, uh, you know, one thing that, that always my father-in-law has done a great job of saving money and being a provider. So every time she would go for trials, it's kind of like, well, uh, he's probably spending a thousand dollars every time he goes just in staying in hotels, buying food, Mm -hmm. gas, everything. And so my thing with my wife, I was telling her, I said, you know, what about people who can't afford this? You know, he's put himself through discipline in a great position to be able to, to provide this for his wife. Right. What about other people who can't do that? Yeah. So same thing along your guys' lines, being able to go and remodel these rooms. And like yeah. you said, for some, some houses that are in, in rough shape, yeah. Yeah. you know, I mean, we kind of talked a little bit earlier about, you know, me walking into my, my dreary drab house and, and it giving me this feeling of like, nah, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm not excited to be here, you know? So, I'd imagine for a kid to, you know, even the last one y'all did, the kids were super excited. I think his brother was with him too. Yeah. And so his brother got to participate and it's, it's not just for him. It's his little brother too. Mm-hmm. And it's like that little brother being so, being so excited for the gift that you are giving them, you know, it's not just the room that's making him feel good. Yeah. You're making his brother feel good who in turn is helping him feel good because they're together all the time. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you're kind of not you're kind of creating an environment, not just for him but his loved ones. They're gonna help him through the rough times. Yeah. You know, and uh, to me that's amazing. You yeah. know, and to have the the foresight to say, you know, hey, this is what we do. We're interior designers. That's how we're gonna approach this. Yeah. You know, and and I think for your your average Joe Blow on the street's gonna go. You know he'd probably rather go to Disneyland, yeah. you know? Yeah. But at the same time, he, he's not going to live at Disneyland. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. And for kids in, that don't have maybe furniture or don't have a bed, yeah. you know, that's massive. Yeah. Right. You know? So, I mean, that's that's a... It, it, um, one of the things that we try to do, and uh, the one that you mentioned, the last one, they do share a room and they were excited about having bunk beds. But when that's not the case, we try to do a room makeover for the sibling as well because oh. because it is a journey for the whole family. And yeah. sometimes that sibling kind of gets lost in the shuffle because it's all about all those medical appointments and doctor's appointments and surgeries and procedures. And um, it, as much as they care for their sibling, they can they can feel like a little bit left out, I guess. Sure. So we try to uh, do something for them as well. Um, which makes our organization a little bit uh, unique. Um, but 
we are like so blessed in seeing these kids and the, the fight that they have in them and they never have a woe is me or why me attitude it's always like I mean they're just so resilient and so strong and brave and they get up every morning and fight the fight and uh, it's just awesome Oh, that's, I, I love it. And, and like I said, right, when I saw you initially posting things, uh, you know, it, social media is kind of like this cesspool, right? Sure, it's yeah. it's a, you know, you just scroll through things. And you're like, you know, trash, 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 yeah. trash, trash, <laughs> you know. So then when you see that, it's kind of like it reminds you, you know, not only not only the obvious thing that you guys are doing and the not so obvious things that you guys are doing for families, you know, but to me it's a reminder to everybody else to uh, you know give a little bit yeah you know and you know everybody can give on different levels but you know even if it's just being courteous towards somebody yeah. else you know because it could be it could be you know henry at work right. who's got a kid that's that's sick or right. you know and he's going through a bunch and you're kind of a jerk to him all right the time. Yeah. you know it, we we see all this i mean we're all on social media for the most part and so it's just constant, you know, a bombardment of negativity, yeah. you know. So to be able to have something out there that that reminds you to, hey, you don't have to be a jerk every yeah, day, yeah. you know, do a little bit more. Uh, and I think the kids, um, one of the big things that we picked up from them is they are like, I can't believe somebody would do this for me. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's not one or two people. Right. It's like... You know, 20 or 30 people, you know, somebody bought the pillow, somebody bought the blanket, and we came and we painted the walls, and then floor installer volunteered his time. So um, that's one of the things that's most touching is to the kids, not like, hey, I got a new bed, I got a new blanket. It's like, somebody did this for me. They went out of their way. They took their time. And, you know, the littlest ones may not realize that, but the teenagers that we've worked on their rooms, that's that's what they've they'll write us a letter and say i can't believe y'all took your time and um to do this for me and so i think it makes them feel like you know important and loved and yeah um, and that's so rewarding and to your point you know um so i think our gifts you know are we we like to serve and we like to do you know we we enjoy i mean we get to use our talents to help someone but Um, you can help in other ways, you know, someone may be just a generous person and they can donate money or, uh, you know, donate their time or, um, you know, if you have the gift of gab, you can share the the story with others and get people involved. So there's, it's not just one way to serve. It's, you know, there's just, like you said, just being kind to someone and a smile and just giving a little bit of grace when not knowing what they're going through goes a long way. I love yeah. that you said that because I think we overlook that so much. We get we get so busy in in uh, daily life and and work and and uh, things that don't carry any weight right. or that shouldn't carry any weight, and we forget that you know. And and it's important to be reminded from time to time, yeah. you know. And I think you guys, what you're doing and and what you're putting out there, it's uh, granted. There's a lot of scrolling happening on the internet, but <laughs> yeah. it's being seen, yeah. you know. And I think I think at some point, people are gonna. To some degree, they'll they'll latch on to that, and it'll be a reminder of hey, you know, the, you know, twin sisters interiors are doing this, and and you know, I I know how to do yeah something too, yeah. and let me start helping out, you yeah. know. So that's awesome. Yeah. So let me ask you guys this: uh, where can everybody find y'all? As far as if they want to get work done, or if they want to donate to Savvy Giving, what is the best way for people to uh, connect with you guys on that stuff? Um, our website um, is probably the best way, twinsistersinteriors.com. Um, there's more about Savvy Giving on there and the projects that we've done, and you can go and see all the rooms, and then um, as well as a way to give back, donate. Um, on so there's there. a place to donate on yes, that? Yes, okay. uh, from our website. And then um, and 100% of that money donated goes to these rooms. Exactly. We, we, of course, don't take any salary or anything out of that, and we just put it into the purchases of the rooms. So... You can feel confident we don't have a huge overhead where we're paying a CEO sure. salary to yeah. run this nonprofit. It's uh, it's all and and it's local children. Yes, we also if we're accepting nominations, if you know of a child or a family that's um, and it like we said, it doesn't have to be a cancer diagnosis. Um, it could be a, 
uh, another, you know, kind of chronic illness or an, an accident that's left them, you know, in a, a difficult situation. Or uh, we helped a child who had a kidney transplant and get in her home. And anyway, so if you know someone that could benefit, you can don't or um, nominate them on there as well. On the website? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, we're on social media with Twin Sisters TX on Instagram and Facebook. I think Facebook's just Twin Sisters Interiors. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome yeah. so and the next one you guys are doing are is for a, a young lady yes. so when are you guys expecting to be done with that how long is the process well that's, her she turns five on may 7th yeah or may 9th may 9th and so we're going to try to install the room on may 7th so she'll have a really amazing that's pretty quick party. yeah how long does it typically take you guys <laughs> to turn a room around like that well um the the long lead time is collecting enough donations to be able to buy this stuff okay. so um we kind of meet the child, agree to the room, um, come up with the design, then start fundraising. Okay. We'd love to get where we're ahead of the game and like being able to go to the money in the bank and say, um, here's what we're going to So I guess that's the important part of people, you know, hearing this and, and donating early. You know, yes. I, I just go to the website, yeah. uh, donating money. That way you can get these rooms. To, you could get them turned around quicker. Yes. You could probably do more in we a could, year. Yeah, you know, so uh, uh, that's that's important to not not that's, wait for the, hey, we're fixing to do one. Yeah. You know, just kind of donate yes. when you can or regularly. And We want to be proactive. We're always reacting to yeah. the room. And um, we'd love to get, like I said, money in the bank because every time we're really starting from zero. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, we're, I just wanted to mention we're also physically located in Bernie, Texas. In the we're in the Walmart parking lot, uh, the old visitor center building. We bought this building a couple years ago. It was built in 1907. But we're here Monday through Friday. If um, you know you ever want to come in for design work, you can always come and find us. His, uh, What's the address here? <clears throat> excuse me, 1407 South Main Street. And this is a cool area. Like when I was walking up, I'm kind of a huge nerd, right? So when I'm walking up, I notice the the well out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I notice the old brick uh, or stone wall around the edge. Yeah, I, I'm a huge nerd for that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I'm the guy that goes to the Alamo and just stares at a brick. Yeah, you know because it's kind of like it's a hundred years old. Yeah, you know the wall maybe outside. You know the Alamo was what two hundred years old or yeah. something like that. And it's just amazing to me to see, uh, you know the the working of the stone right now sure. this is me being a super big nerd <laughs> but it's kind of like you know to me it's we live in a world right now that it's it's a things are disposable dis, and, we live know. in a disposable world yeah. Yeah. and it things are made cheaply they're mm-hmm. made quick yeah and it and it's like this is a guy who had a skill yeah. right. you know and took a stone chiseled it to a certain size placed it you know huge weight even just to do the work outside yeah. you know and it's like it's amazing because you can go get not anymore because the the cost of materials have gone up so high here lately (laughs) but you know you can go buy sections of fence you know yeah and uh uh it's just uh it's 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 just sad about you know like you said we're disposable yeah well we have to check out on our property we have this building this rock building over here it was they say built in the 1840s but um they were german immigrants that they would train in masonry so you can clearly see different oh really uh styles of masonry on the building and so it's that's just, pretty cool it's been up for you know what is this um 160 80 six, years 180 years that's a long time um and so you know it's just really neat to see the history on this property we're on an acre here in, in main street it's, Bernie. it's beautiful and it, it, it's funny because you know uh, that skill it was something that that uh like you said, they were training people to learn yeah. this stuff. Yeah. And and that skill is kind of like a lost art, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, my sister built this um, metal barn out of her place, and she had somebody do some stonework on the front, and real simple kind of stuff. But uh, but it's funny because, you know, I, I we tend to, with technology, we tend to lose skills, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, because things are just easier now. So it's beautiful to see that kind of stuff yeah. and, uh, you know, the, the longevity of it. You know, yeah. my house is probably, they literally built my house in like three months. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, it'll probably be up for another 10 years or something. Yeah. You know, but not, but these kinds of things, you know, they're up for almost 200 years yeah. now. Yeah. So uh, uh, I love seeing that stuff. Yeah, yeah it's really cool. Stuff. So again, Twin Sisters Interiors. That's uh-huh. right. Bernie, Texas. Yeah. Savvy Giving. Uh, donate. 
on our early and often yes <laughs> and uh and i appreciate y'all's time thank, thank you thank so you for much. sitting with me and yeah. by the way we went to school together for a while so i guess we reconnected on social media yeah and uh so the cesspool is good for something <laughs> yeah, but. I, yeah I, talk to your well we talked to our kids about growing up in small town george west i was just telling them the other day i was like yeah we had open campus in middle school we could just walk off go oh, hang yeah. out at the gas station they're like what that's crazy <laughs> and well, like yeah we were talking the other day me and a couple of other friends uh, chris hanneke chris hanneke said to you hi oh. by the way and uh, it's funny because there's uh, growing up in a small community and and there's different levels of small community, right? So somebody might say a, a town with 200,000 people is a small community. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, try 2,000 2, people, yeah. you know? And, uh, uh, man, I loved it. And yeah. I, I'm glad that we had great. that experience, you know? Granted, there's not much opportunity as an adult there. Yeah. But growing up there, I don't know, you, you, you saw people regularly. You had to, you know, be honest with folks for the most part because yeah, you yeah. saw them every day and well, yeah. uh, my favorite part was there wasn't an in crowd it was like there was one crowd yeah everybody, everybody got along everybody got along it wasn't you didn't have to worry about who's popular and maybe that's because we didn't have social media back then but yeah, all that the helped posting and you know <laughs> and everybody was friend you know we were all friends there wasn't clicks and things you know yeah. it was just a big group and um that's what i miss most about that small town and um i think we've kept we're not you know close to anybody there but we've kept more in touch with the people we went to school with in sixth sure. seventh eighth grade than we have even you know our high school years ended up in corpus but um it's just such a good class of people in small town george west and it's just it's hard to find the good quality authentic kindness that that we had in that small town so you, we, you know it's funny because like you see stuff on the news and you see kind of, you know, the, the goings on. And sometimes I get a little, uh, I don't want to use the word depressed, but just, yeah. you know, bummed out, right, yeah. that things are going the way they are. And then I go back to George West and I see my nephews and their friends and they're all respectful and they all get along. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like, oh, you know, yeah. okay, well, everything is still good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's, a, there's some, there's some, uh, uh, Good kids out there That's and good right. people raising them, so For sure. uh, there's still that. Yeah, we I went, unfortunately was at a funeral Monday in small town Kennedy, and people still in small towns would pull over for a funeral procession. And they don't do that here. Yeah, I've been to one here in San Antonio, and I've seen I'm people like, try and not run in. the funeral. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> they cut yeah. in and are just thinking, where were these people raised? And yeah. So it was that was something I noticed this this past Monday is just. Uh, there is still that that authentic quality in small town Texas. Yeah, so if you guys get an opportunity to raise your kids in small town. Yeah. Well, Bernie, <laughs> we did. We brought them here, and then now it's booming. Town. It's booming now. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It used well, to be all hill country or uh, cowboys out here, I guess, but not so much anymore. Even if my wife, her dad used to be on the outskirts of town, and he lives off of, uh, I don't know, uh, what is that? Uh, Bulverde Road in sixteen oh four or something, oh, yeah. and uh, now he's got he's just engulfed, oh, yes. you know. So uh, it's it's good because like with the work you guys do, with the work my buddy Bo does yeah. and his wife, and even the stuff I do, you know, progress is how we make a living. Sure. Correct. But uh, I always tell him, I always tell my buddy Bo, I'm like, we're running out of the middle of nowhere. So, yeah. yeah. You know, and that's kind of that's kind of a, a double edged sword. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, I thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I uh, appreciate y'all sitting down with me. Yes. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast. 